Listen, I got a ton of questions. I'm glad I have some extra time. Uh, normally, I save this question for the end, but because I am a fan, I need to ask it at the beginning, which is um, I grew up on Thundercats. It means a lot to me. I've been waiting for someone in Hollywood to do this thing. So what can you tell people about uh, the status? Uh, well, I was just talking with Simon about the script yesterday. We're actively working on a draft right now, and um, it's 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 cruising forward, and it's it's super awesome. Really excited about it, and um, yeah, I mean, and Thundercats is like, you know, uh, you know, in addition to working on that movie, it's you know that that film has a lot of inspiration within this Godzilla movie itself. Not to bring it back around to this, but. Um, even like if you look at like the shot, for instance, in the trailer where um, uh, Kong is blocking Shimo's breath with the axe, um, that's like a direct, you know, reference to the opening credit sequence where lion jumps in the frame and, you know, holds the sword in front of him. So and, and even a lot of like the 80s, like, you know, cartoons, you know, like a lot of that was a big, big influence, specifically Thundercats and Masters of the Universe, color palette wise for this movie. So I have one follow up, which is that like, what are you guys envisioning as like the tone of this because you can have like a fun tone with thundercats but you could also play it really serious like this is life and death stakes well i think you have to have a little bit of both you know i mean like uh you got to take it seriously and you know in the, in the cartoon even though it was definitely for kids you know the characters were in a fair amount of danger and um and you know i'm definitely still scarred from that one episode where lino is getting wrapped up in the 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 mummy uh uh the the rope you know when he's like in the temple um that really messed me up as a kid but um yeah, I mean, like, uh, you know, just like I think any good adaptation these days is you got to stay as true to the source material as possible. That's what people really want. And that's sort of our goal. And, and yeah, I mean, if you're doing something that's, you know, beyond being a kid's, you know, cartoon, you, you know, obviously you have to raise the stakes. So, yeah, it's got a little bit of both of that, really. Do you think it could be your next project? Could be. We'll see. Okay, moving on. I'll, uh, I'll leave you alone now on that. I appreciate you indulging. <laughs> hey, I love talking about the underguys. It's all good with me. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I listen, I, I could do it longer, but I think everyone at Warner Brothers is like, no. Like, <laughs> well, luckily that's at Warner Brothers. So, you know, they're kind of like, no, but oh, all right. <laughs> Believe me, um, man, I, I'm like, can I lean in a little more? No, I will. I'll go to Godzilla. Um, so what do you think would surprise Godzilla fans to learn about like making a big budget Godzilla movie like this? My God. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't know that I have a good answer for you because so much of, uh, behind the scenes is so complicated. I don't think people would understand half of, you know, what we what we deal with, you know, um, uh, these are very complicated movies to put together. And uh, it's everything moves at slow motion because you can only move at the speed of animation. Um, you know, shooting these films is the easiest part. Um, uh, everything else is difficult because it takes so long to develop. But with that said, I mean, I've, I've had such a great experience on this film. I mean, making GBK really gave me the confidence and understanding of how to deal with fully big animated sequences and what could you know, what can be pulled off in that. And um, that's the whole reason why I made this film in the first place is I wanted to do, uh, do a movie that um, really leaned into um, something that I felt like I had never seen before in a monster film, which was, you know, a movie that really allows the monster POV to tell the story. The monsters themselves tell a lot of their own story in this film. And um, that that was the draw for me. I wanted to do something groundbreaking that um, even though you've seen, uh, you know, hundreds of monster kaiju films before, I don't, I don't think there's ever been one that um, that leans into allowing the monsters to tell their own story before like we do. One of the things about this is you obviously have a budget and each VFX shot costs a ridiculous sum of money. What did you learn on the last one that you took to this one in terms of where and when to spend resources or, you know what I mean? Like, because yeah. there's so much cost on every shot. Well, that's the main, one of the biggest things you learn when, when making a big tentpole Hollywood film is that, um, you know, budget is such a, like a number almost doesn't mean as much as what you do with it, you know, like, because at the end of the day, 
sometimes when movies have more money, it just means there's going to be more waste because everybody knows that there's a uh, there's a parachute to bail them out, you know, um, and so they end up just kind of splattering paint against the wall and you look at the film and you're like, well, this movie costs the same amount as this one, but why does this one look so much bigger? And the reason for that is, is because they're just not wasting as much. And so I, you know, having made a Godzilla versus Kong, which up until then was by far the biggest movie I'd ever made. Um, it, it, it gave me a better understanding of really what that, you know, cause that, that, that type of budget is very abstract until you make it. Um, but then you, you just realize like the key to it really is, is just, um, it's, 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 it's knowing how not to waste the money and to put it all on the screen. And, you know, for me, I, I just knew that like leaning more into a film that was going to be fully about the monsters and in that, in that regard, lean more into the animated aspects of it was something that could push that budget even further, you know, like, um, I knew we weren't necessarily getting more resources than we did on the last movie, but I knew we had to make a much bigger, more expansive film. And that's exactly what we did. Somehow we still end, we ended up with almost double the VFX shots that we had in the last one. Um, but it was just because we were smarter with the way we did it. I've spoken to a lot of directors and they basically say that if you don't change what you are planning on doing, you don't have that many revisions, you can make the money go a lot further. That's very true. That's that's like one of the biggest keys, and and that was that was one of the the most important things that we did as well. You know, like you, you because those last minute changes are, the, are 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 a lot of those are like the waste that I'm talking about, and um, and uh, and really like a lot of especially like the major monster sequences in this film are very similar to the very first draft of the script that Terry Rossio wrote, and and we stuck very very true to that. So uh, one of the things about this franchise is that it, it um, there's a lot of not cooks in the kitchen, but a lot of people that have to make decisions on what you can do because it's, you know, you have multiple studios and everything else. So what is it like sort of, you know what I mean? Like trying to figure out the movie you want to make while also appealing to Warner Brothers and Toho and all the people that have to say yes. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm very lucky because I, um, I'm a very collaborative filmmaker, so I understand the strengths of collaboration. And um, and also I'm a very empathetic person. So sometimes you as a filmmaker have to look at the movie from a producer's perspective and you have to say, well, you know, if I was in their position, what would make them feel respected and, and heard while at the same time, I have a, a very clear vision of something I want to do. Um, and sometimes, you know, you have to, um, you know, uh, see, you know, sometimes you see different ways about approaching something and sometimes you're right on the same page. And um, at the end of the day, it's 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 really about um, just making sure that everybody feels heard. But at the end of the day, you have to follow your heart and your vision and you can't let that um, change up too much. But. A lot of a lot of great ideas come from other people sometimes, and 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 by that I mean sometimes an animator might have a great idea, the the prop guy might have a great idea, you know, and then obviously producers have great ideas, and I think there's always this sort of um, us versus them sort of myth out there, and I, I think if you have good producers, it, it it's not like that even on a big movie like that, and you know I've been very lucky with these films to collaborate with. You know, Mary Parent, Alex Garcia, they're both fantastic producers and um, and both of them have been making these monster movies for a while. But, you know, I will say, like when I came on Godzilla versus Kong, I did have that sort of complex of feeling a bit like a guest to a, a, a franchise, you know, like each film was always a different filmmaker. And, you know, I'm kind of standing on the shoulders of giants, literally and figuratively when I'm making Godzilla versus Kong. Um, and even though I felt like I was able to, um, persevere in that and make my own movie, it was really only when I got into this film that I felt like, okay, everybody really trusts me now. Um, you know, like I have my vision for what I think that now based on my experience on Godzilla versus Kong, where I can take this and I have the confidence to do it. 
And so in, in some ways I, I felt like, you know, more like I was able to put myself in this movie almost more than I have in any of my films since maybe like The Guest, you know, like um, in a lot of ways, this is a very kind of personal journey for me in this story. And having been in the MonsterVerse now for almost seven years, um, you know, I, I'm, I feel like I, you know, I feel real ownership on what's going on. And that's been a really fantastic feeling. One of the things is that Godzilla is the... Godzilla is very popular right now. You have Monarch, you have this, you have Godzilla minus one. Like, um, but one of the things I'm curious about is when you're dealing with like hollow earth and mm -hmm. you're introducing things down there, um, how much like sort of freedom do you get to explore? How much is like they're a Bible? Do you know what I mean? Because it seems like that, you know, um, there's more coming, you know, as long as this film performs. Yeah. I mean, with this film, you know, because we kind of started this film a little bit before Monarch. And so Hollow Earth was sort of like, you know, open for grabs, you know, up for grabs. And, um, you know, we did a little fly through of it in the last movie. And so we got a little taste of what it could be. But I was so excited to be able to revisit it and re-explore it in all these different ways. And, you know, I remember like when the last film came out, uh, Elon Musk tweeted about the movie and, you know, he, he, he called the movie Amaze Balls, I think. And, uh, but one of his uh, like, uh, follow up tweets is he was questioning where the light source in Hollow Earth was, um, which isn't answered in the first film. Um, and so, uh, as a, as a, as a rebuttal to that, you know, the very first shot of this movie answers the question of where the light source comes from in hollow earth as a, as a response to Elon Musk's tweet. So hopefully he'll appreciate that when he sees it. <laughs> so, uh, Kong gets a son essentially in this film, uh, how long before Godzilla gets a son? I mean, hopefully soon. I mean, my, one of my favorite movies of the whole series is Godzilla versus Destroya and that, that sequence when, you know, Junior dies and Godzilla kind of mourns over him and it's just so upsetting. Um, that's such an emotional high for the series, one of my favorite moments. And uh, so it'd be great to get a little bit more of a, you know, so, you know, kind of a, a character that reflects Godzilla in, in his own way at some point here. There's obviously an appetite for Godzilla and Kong and future stories. How much have you guys, when you were making this, how much are you already thinking about planting seeds for where it can go? Mm -hmm. And how much is it sort of like you can really only do it one at a time? Um, well, you never want to get too far ahead of yourselves. But at the end of the day, even when we're shooting, I actually planted quite a few Easter eggs in this movie. Um, some are pretty on the nose that... I think when the movie actually comes out and they'll build a freeze frame, they'll, they'll get some hints of uh, potential directions of things to come. So, um, uh, you, you know, we, we may not do uh, post credit scenes for these movies, but there are, there are tee ups to where we would go and um, I have some ideas about, you know, uh, potential new uh, or foes that might come up and, uh, and, and, and plots. And so th there's some really fun, clever things I think we've done to, uh, to, to set some things up. I'm always fascinated by the editing process. So, um, cause I'm just about out of time. Did you have like a much longer first cut? Did you end up with a lot of deleted scenes? I'm, I'm not a big, um, you know, long first cut type of director. Um, my, uh, my editor, uh, Josh Schaefer and I have worked now together two films in a row. GBK was our first and I just absolutely love working with Josh and we really see eye to eye in terms of, you know, running time. We think about that a lot um, from the beginning. And so we try to aim within 15 minutes or so, 10 to 20 minutes, I guess at most um, of the final running time. And so the, uh, I think the editor's cut for this film was like 208 or something, 210. It wasn't long, you know, like, and that was by design. I mean, it, you know, you can, you can edit any movie into four hours if you want. So it's not like we didn't have enough material to do that, but right out the gate we're like well let's not let's not create any illusions to any you know to to an unrealistic version of this film like we want it to be um we knew that the movie was going to be about or sl just under two hours and that's what we geared towards from the beginning uh, i already got a wrap uh which sucks but i'll just say that i really hope it's a huge hit uh because i obviously want more and um, you know, I really enjoyed watching the uh, the Titans fight. Oh, so thank you very much. Appreciate that. <laughs> cool man.